You know, I am convinced that the city of Houston reigns more than the entire state of Washington. It's incredible, man. It's every single time I come to Houston it is just record-breaking rain. Every single time. Ah. There's some clear, it's not gonna, it's gonna rain for like a week, but it's not gonna rain all day, every day. It's just, man, it's getting old. Houston hates me. Houston, we've got a problem. I am going to escape the rain. It's not raining right now. It may be raining later. Uh, we're gonna do something really special today, guys. I'm gonna check out the uh, Space Center here in Houston, Texas. Now I've taken you over to the one over at Cape Canaveral in Florida, but the communications building is actually right down the road and they have a specific space center here for NASA that we can go explore. And a lot of it's indoor, as I believe. Um, I'm also using my Canon M50 again with my super wide angle vlog lens. Lots and lots of larger than life stuff out here. I am excited about this. I'm hanging out with some uh, YouTube friends that drove me down here from the Woodlands area. So gonna be hanging out with some local friends, tour guides, but uh, we're gonna go uh, inside the museum today. It's uh, 31 bucks to get in, $5 parking, and you guys get to come in for free 99 Woohoo! I mean, look at this outdoor area. They've got a, I think it's a 747 carrier with a shuttle, the Independence. Uh, this is a real one. The 747 is a real one. That's just uh, like a replica built version up there, but uh, lots of big stuff out here. Let's head towards front now. Getting ready to go in. They do have a, a replica of a, a command module there. Uh, but yeah, let's go inside and see the front. And good old Neil Armstrong and his steps. All right, let's go inside. Uh, I got stopped here at the gate. You know, I say NASA is always really good because they're like, they let you share anything you want. And uh, here in Houston, this is new. Um, pieces of what I have in my hand I can bring in. The Canon M50 is small enough that it is allowed, but the tripod that I'm holding and the microphone is not allowed here. I've never seen anything like this, so um, I'm gonna go back to the car. I'm gonna drop off pieces of the system. We're just not gonna have awesome audio for this and stabilization. <laughs> That's very weird. I hope, I hope this isn't gonna catch on. I will do my best. All right, we're inside NASA. I'm excited to explore. They've even got a tram that's gonna get us around later. But let's look inside the lobby here. Obviously I gotta find a magnet still. Gotta find one. I don't have a whole lot of time to play in here because I got a tram ticket to go over to the original mission control tour, which should be kind of fun, but they, they have some magnets and they have some gift stores. Some lunar modules there. It's not actually very busy in here. They've got some uh, rides over here, some simulators and stuff you can ride and then a really big lunar module and some kids play areas. Apollo rocket. Let's go check out those magnets first though. All right, I've got the magnet options here. Lots and lots of magnets. I love space. Yeah. I kind of like that one. I think since I already got one of these in Florida, I'm gonna go with this one from Texas. And we may actually have more time to explore this area, but since there's tram openings, let's go get the good stuff out of the way. And understand that I can't do anything about audio outside, so if they're talking during the tram tour, I'm not even gonna try to film, because it's just gonna be sound the entire time. It's really windy outside here. This is their food court in here. Pretty cool. It's a moist day. It's not raining right now. Here we go. Here's my friends, everybody say hi. hi. Here we go. Control Center. Heading on upstairs to the original 1960s Mission Control Center. Stairs, stairs, stairs. Yep, yep. Aldrin, Collins, and Armstrong. There it is, 
everybody. Kind of dark in there. We're gonna watch a movie, so I gotta turn the camera off for a little bit. Uh, cigarettes and ashtrays. <laughs> Definitely the 60s. So I couldn't film uh, during the demonstration, but they do this really cool show. They basically do the entire 1969, you know, landing on the moon in here, and you gotta put all your cameras away, but at the end of it, they let us show you part of the control room here. Getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And we're riding the old school tram back. It's an older model. All right, one more tram ride for the day. I'm gonna go ahead and see the astronaut training facility and see some more indoor stuff. So we're gonna go on a little tour here and see a working facility. This is not a mock-up, this is like real up here. And I'll uh, share what I can. Going upstairs. Huh. Columbus, so, Harmony, Destiny. Ooh, look at that. So what we have in this room is a bunch of mock-up models. And they've got all the different li like the living quarters that you're going to use in space. So that the astronauts can, can train in here and get used to the areas and the space and all the buttons and everything. So a bunch of different uh, modules for training. And it looks like the Zarya Sunrise there collects some magnets. That's pretty. <laughs> no, those are not magnets. Looks cool though. Also, you'll notice that not all of these are necessarily just American modules. There's all the different countries astronauts can come in here as well. Look at that one down there. It's like living in a scamp trailer. <laughs> and these are uh, working offices. All sorts of computer gear. Uh, over here, we've got the uh, fabric department some sewing machines and stuff to make repairs and stuff because they do have to uh, practice in all different parts of the shuttle so that's what this is for there's the Boeing Starliner down there and the Orion a lot of US tax dollars down there guys I'll tell you what <laughs> we'll be taking something like that to Mars in about 15 years if you look on top of the blue boxes over there we got a bunch of different robotic vehicles for different terrains. And some robotic men down there. Apparently they can even shake your hand. They're that gentle, the robots. Sorry for the wind, guys. Last stop is another outdoor spot here at Rocket Park. We got a couple rockets to look at up close. First of the Little Joe 2 BP-22 rocket. And another one. I don't know what this one's called. Bro, do you even horsepower? That's an engine. I'm still kind of frustrated about not being able to use my microphone. Like, nothing I can do about it though. I'll just limit outside stuff. All right, inside we have a Saturn V, and it's one of the only functional ones. It takes up the entire building here. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. You almost have to stand next to it so you can see how massive this thing is. All right, there's some more thrusters there. A tribute to Apollo 11. As well as right over here, Aldrin, Collins, and Mr. Neil Armstrong. USA, USA. <laughs> Look at all those detailed components in there. Jeez. All right, we're getting to the tip. All of about four inches to spare fitting in this building. <laughs> I remember those thrusters on the movie. They also even filmed part of that movie, Apollo 13, in different buildings here in the Houston area so that, so that it could be more realistic. So that's pretty cool. We've got some last minute important details to work out here and then we'll be hitting the road. I don't know what I'm looking at, I'm pretty confused. We can go inside that. Hmm. 
He's pretty good at that. This is the uh, crew quarters in here. Yep, they gotta do their cardio in space. And the wardroom up there. Cozy. The waste management compartment. Yeah. And there's where you sleep. And your space dentist office. And a 1975 docking modular trainer. Oh. It's a tight squeeze in there. One Apollo fuel cell. <laughs> oh, it's even fuel injected. All right, gonna go head back to the beginning and go check out that Boeing 747 and the Space Shuttle one last time before we hit the road. We have a lunar module cockpit trainer here, so you can practice. Suspended here is the Faith 7 Mercury 9 spacecraft, flown by Gordon Cooper in 1963. It is a uh, very low light here downstairs, but lots to see. The Apollo 17 command module. And just take a peek in here. Oh man. Wow. Look at the door mechanism here. Some space food. There's your space steak. And your bag of water. That if yogurt, you go through the Skylab, you can see like everything. And space screens. Mm -hmm. Working on the moon there. And they got a lunar rover right there. Head on into the lunar samples vault. Look how big this thick this door is. Yeah. They can touch some moon rock over here. From Apollo 17 in 1972. What? I can remember it. Oh yeah. We touched it. And they are still to this day here at this facility testing moon rock and other chemicals and stuff. And we're going back outside. Behind me is the orbiter access arm. This is how the astronauts get from the tower to the rocket. The wind is still just ruining all my audio. What can I do? A big jet there. Let's see how we can get into the Boeing 747. And go right up on inside. First thing I'd do if this was mine is I would remove the dinette. And <laughs> I guess you gotta have a workstation. Get this power panel and the micro printer from Canon. Yeah. And lastly, we can go inside the shuttle independence here. Here's the flight deck. Huh. How hard could the instruction manual be? Oh my, never mind. I don't want to learn all that. That's why you guys get paid the big bucks. Down there, we've got the satellite motor cradle. It's kind of like an airstream on the inside instead. <laughs> inside the uh, airlock here. All right, and lastly, before we exit, we're at the front, or the pressure dome. A web-like structure is a pressure dome, technically called the aft pressure bulkhead. It looks like tinfoil. <coughs> so I don't take you guys places. And luckily, they kept putting off the rain. Now it's not gonna hit till like 10 p.m. tonight, so. Oh well, found something good to do on a possible rainy day. All right, before we head out, we're gonna try some astronaut ice cream. It's an ice cream sandwich. Mm, I don't know, are you a labor? Okay, it actually looks like an ice cream sandwich. It's very lightweight. Um, let's take a look here. Whoa! It looks like a space ice cream sandwich. 
<laughs> that is so weird. It's got the colors and everything in there. <laughs> it's not quite like normal ice cream though. That's really weird. It literally tastes like ice cream. Okay. All right, well, I had fun in there. Learned a lot. It's a great extra piece to add to the Cape Canaveral stuff. But I uh, just want to close this out before I go back out in the wind. I'll uh, update you when I get back to the RV, though. Hey, it's still moist here in the Houston, Texas area. Had an absolute blast. Forgot to close out that video, but uh, had a lot of fun at the, at the NASA Houston Center. So to mix that with the uh, one over at Cape Canaveral in Florida, I feel like I got, got the full experience. But I still want to go to, like, Washington, D.C. eventually. I know they got some NASA stuff there. Definitely. I had a blast, but I got to talking with uh, my friends there, and uh, Bob's a cook, and so he taught me some new uh, ways to, to cook chicken and my veggies. So really excited to introduce that. It'll be fun. Um, but yeah, the whole camera thing, it keeps catching me off guard, and the more traveling I'm doing, the more it's happening. It's like, you can no longer use a normal camera. The only thing you can bring in anywhere is a cell phone. and. I don't know. I, I try to capture good video and then it's like the $10 tripod can't come in and the microphone can't, but the $1,200 camera is fine. It's like you're, it doesn't make it, it keeps happening. So people keep calling stuff professional, like, like GoPros aren't allowed so many places now. This is, this is probably new, you know, to the last few years more and more indoor places and nasa of all people like they have royalty free videos and everything on nasa is non-copyright so the fact that they're limiting the amount of cameras and gopros you can bring in it's like yeah but i can use any possible youtube footage and not get in trouble from nasa and it's, i don't know that's very weird but you should know that it's going on and it is frustrating as a video creator to continue to be turned down this is going to kill my industry of vlogging everywhere i go you know, again, I'm paying admission and you guys didn't, so, you know, maybe they're just trying to make it. You can only shoot crummy cell phone video. Well, it's not always about the equipment. I can actually shoot pretty good video on a cell phone, too. Which I probably should have done now that I looked at the audio, because pretty much everything outdoors was ruined. It is what it is. So, over here, you guys hear my generator? I have to run the generator. That's why I didn't pull the generator out when I got this massive solar system, because... You're not going to always get sun. You may get days and days and days where the sun doesn't even come out. So, uh, and when that happens, even me, I've got to run the generator for four or five hours just to top off my batteries for normal use. It happens. Yeah. Well, but what do I got going on for February? I I'm no longer buying tickets or planning anything because uh, anything outdoors can be canceled in Texas. And, you know, we're getting that April shower much, much earlier in Texas. Uh, so I, I gotta just play everything by ear, keeping a close eye on my stuff up in Livingston. I can jet back up there. And then I have one big ticket for March. Rain or shine, pretty much, you know. But, uh, okay, some more uh, Texas stuff coming. I appreciate you guys being patient with me. If, it, if I weren't on a schedule, I could just wait for a sunny, nice day to vlog, but I gotta, I gotta play with the weather a little bit. I'll show you inside real quick. Oh, I also have to run the air conditioner today because it's 78 degrees with rain and thunderstorms. I can't crack a window because it'll just get rainy in here. So <laughs> it's just, it's tricky sometimes. It's not that bad. It's not that big a deal. Jaxman. Jaxman, what do you do when it rains? You know, I just, just lounge around and call my servant whenever I need something. He's pretty good at it and he's kind of slow, but you know, it works. NASCAR season's about in full bloom. Really, really excited. So, uh, yeah, TV, Netflix, video games, a little bit of editing here and there, and uh, waiting for the weather to pass. You guys take care, Jackson. I'll see you very soon from Texas. Bye-bye.